All right, in this problem, we're going to begin to work with pulleys, and we're going to work with uh, a system that's being that's moving across a frictionless surface and across a frictionless, massless pulley here. So to begin with, this problem states that a 10 kilogram mass is being pulled across a frictionless surface by a hanging 5 kilogram mass across a massless, frictionless pulley. Calculate the acceleration of the system and the tension in the rope. So the first thing that I like to do here, obviously, is to write the mass into here. So this is 10 kilograms here, and this is going to be 5 kilograms here, okay? So a lot of times people have problems conceptualizing this, that a 5 kilogram mass, a mass that's less than this one, could actually move this. And the answer to that question is if there's no friction, any mass will move this, okay? I could blow on this uh, just with my breath and move it on a frictionless surface. It would go very slowly, but it would move. So if there's no friction, any force that's acting upon this uh, will move it, okay? So if there's no friction. So let's just get that out of the way first. The second thing here is that this is dealing with a, this is a, this is a, a magical pulley, okay? And what I mean by that is that there's not going to be any uh, mass or friction, okay? And this is also a mag magical rope. There's no mass on this rope. And that matters because the mass of the rope would add to the system if it did. And if this, if this had a mass here, we would have to take into account the moment of rotational inertia. And we don't want to deal with any of that right now. This is just a, this is just a very basic problem, okay? So that, that's what we have to start with there. So what I'm going to do, the first thing I have to do here is I have to look at the whole system as a whole. Okay, so I'm going to take a, take a look at this system, and I'm going to take this this five kilogram uh, block, and I'm going to stretch it out here, and I'm going to define my axis. I'm going to define my axis here, okay, as going down across like this. So my axis is going to go this way. I'm going to define my positive. We could call that if you want to call it positive x. That's fine. It doesn't really matter what you call it, but my whole axis is going to is going to go across like that. So we're going to find the acceleration of the system first. Okay, and the reason we need to do that is that um, we need to look at this as one system using Newton's third law because they're going to accelerate together, right? They're going to accelerate together, and on this guy right here, I do have th this one force right here of gravity going down like this, right? So I have an FG there. Uh, this one has an FG going down here, and it also has a normal going up here, but we don't really care about that too much because there's no friction. I really care about the normal and, and uh, gravity when I have friction, but in this case, it doesn't really matter right now. So, But I'll go ahead and just write them in for, for completeness sake here. So uh, if this is going to be the force of gravity of this one, this is the force normal of this one, and this is the force of gravity here. The only thing we really care about right now is this force of gravity when we're going to determine the acceleration of the system. So if I go ahead and I stretch out the system here, in other words, if I just stretch it out, like I, I talked about up here, looking at it as one big system, I'm going to have the 10 kilogram mass here. As I showed here, here's my 10 kilogram here. And I'm going to have my 5 kilogram here. So the total mass of that system is going to be 15 kilograms. So I'm going to look at that whole thing as a system, as a complete system here, using the third law. So if I take a look here, I just rewrote this as a complete system. We're going to look at the whole thing, and the only force acting out here is going to be Fg. But which Fg is that? Well, that's going to be the little m here, this little m times g, okay? So if this is little m, this is big m, okay? And that's acting on the whole system. So if we take Newton's second law into account, we're basically going to say that the, the, you know, the sum of the forces, the sum of the forces equals m total a net okay so right here the sum of my forces is here okay that's this part here so this 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 part right here represents the sum of the forces right here all of this okay equals m total acceleration net okay so that's what I'm going at here. The sum of the forces equals m total a net. So uh, when I look at all these forces, the only force that I have here is as fg going this way. So I define my positive axis is going to the right. So there's no other forces here. That's the only force, right? So if I say the sum of the forces, that's just mg 
equals the total mass, 15, of the system times a net. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead down here and write that. So I'm going to say the sum of the forces equals ma net. Okay, and my only force up there was the little force of gravity, which was little mg equals the m total, the big M, right? That, let's just say m total. Should have said that here, total times a net. Okay, so that little m was 5. Okay, that g is 9.8. And the total mass here is going to be 15. And that times a net. Okay, so my a net is going to be 5 times 9.8 over 15 meters per second squared. That's really just one third of that, right? If I divide the five out, I get one third. So that's kind of an interesting topic there because the acceleration should never be more than 9.8, right? It should be less because there's another mass slowing it down, right? So let's go ahead and do that calculation real quick. So that's going to give you about 3.27 meters per second squared. Okay, and that's the acceleration of the whole system. Remember, they move together, okay? They're going to move together. We just want to say the sum of the forces here, where there was just one, equals m total a net. In that case, that's what, that's what we get. So they're both going to be moving now. This is going to have an acceleration of 3.27 meters per second squared. And this one's going to have an acceleration is going to be 3.27 meters per second squared. So they, they always share the acceleration. That's what's important here. Uh, they don't necessarily share the forces here. So I want to find the tension in the rope. The next thing that you're going to do, now there's two ways we can do this, okay? We can, we can make a cut in, in, either, in either rope here. So let me, let me just clone this here and show you what I mean. I could take this as my system here, okay? I could say that's my system that I want to take to find the tension, or I could take this one up here and say that's the system that I want to use to define my tension. So the question you need, to, you need to ask yourself is which system are you going to use, okay? If I call this system A and this is system B, right, which one am I going to use here to determine the tension? Well, if I cut this one right here, I have the tension here, right, and if I cut this one here, I have the tension here, right, okay? So which one is the, the better choice? Well, the answer is it doesn't really matter. You can do either, either one to find the correct answer. But in terms of simplicity, I always want to choose the free body diagram that has the least number of forces, right? The least number, right? So that's this one right here, right? So I only have one force going in this direction. These two cancel each other out. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to write in yellow here in the box just so you can see what we're doing. So that, that the Y really doesn't concern me, right? So if I say the sum of the forces in the Y, equals zero. I'm just saying the normal equals gravity it doesn't doesn't really affect anything here or there. What I really do care about though is the x direction here. So I can say the sum of the forces in the x equals m a net, right? In the x direction, okay? And it's 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 in this direction. So again, this is my positive x direction right here. Okay? So that's the one I care about, right? So what are the sum of the forces here? Well, the sum of the forces in the x direction. I just have one right there. It's just tension, right? So, this, so the force of the tension equals ma net. And now I'm just taking the mass of this 10 kilogram block because that's all that's in my system. If I took the 5, if I took this system here, I would just use the 5. Down here, when I had the whole system, I took 15 because that's what I was looking at. But here, I'm just taking, going to take the 10. So the tension here, okay, the force of the tension is simply going to be that 10, okay, times that acceleration which they shared, which was 3.27, right? So now I know that my tension is going to be 32.7 newtons, okay? So there it is. Now you've solved the tension. You could have done it either way. I mean, if I did it over here, I'll get the same answer. Okay. So that's just something to, something to note when you're taking these uh, th these Newton's third law applications. Always take the one with the least number of forces to find that out. Okay. So that's it. That's how you would find the acceleration of the system. That's how you would find the tension in the rope.
that's all I got for you in this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you soon.